What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? So, uh, all jokes aside, I did hit a really big PR today actually. Uh, and after the PR, which you'll see later, I went on a little rant. Now before anyone watches that further, just understand, like as a coach, I have all my clients arch, because uh, I want to coach them in a way that's gonna make them the most successful on the platform, because they're competing in powerlifting. Now with that said, I think fucking arching and uh, leg drive and stuff to an extreme degree on the bench is a little fucking goofy and I wish they would make the bench press a Larson press. I really do in competition because that would solve it. You could still put the shoulders into a safe position but without all this goofiness with arch. But with that said, because uh, it is a part of powerlifting, it's important that you guys maximize your bench presses in this manner. And so later on in the video, you're gonna see like the crazy side of me come out. But in this part of the video, we're gonna make it more informative. So what I wanna talk about today is the most common misgroove I see in powerlifting on the bench press. And that's when people are benching. And as most of you know, when we bench, we have to push the bar diagonal. The bar path is diagonal in the bench press. It's not like the squat, which is basically straight up and down uh, in, during the straight curve. And because of this, a lot of people end up getting to their chest in the bench, and when they start the initiation off the chest, their elbows wing too much, or they misgroup and push away towards their legs instead of up and back getting that diagonal bar path. This is a really common problem, especially with female trainees who are a little bit more hypermobile and unstable in the shoulders, and so this happens to them a lot. I wanna talk about fixing that. There's gonna be two parts to this video. The first part, we're gonna talk about the positioning of where all the joints and where they need to be and how to stabilize them. In the second part, we're gonna go over cues and some other things, and that'll be on Marcellus' channel. I'll link that in the description box. Um, so let's just get right into it. The number one way to fix this is to actually reduce the amount of diagonal movement we need in the bench press. And the way you do that is through the arch and through positioning your shoulders down towards your ass. So it's, it's actually less to do with the arch and more to do with how you position the scapula and the shoulders in depression, basically getting your shoulders to your ass. So what I mean by that is if I lay down on this bench press and they film from the side for me, from the side view, and if I'm just mildly arched like this, and I wrap this kind of flat back, we always have to hold the bar directly above our shoulder joint. If I try holding this bar behind my head, it's gonna rip my arms off and tear my lats. And if I try to hold this over my belly button, it's gonna be doing like a really heavy front raise. So this is the lockout portion of the bench. But obviously when we bench press, we need to come down a little bit lower and touch low on that sternum slash chest region. So this causes a diagonal movement to the bench press. And when we're flat, this diagonal movement is very extreme. But if I get into an arch, and I'm gonna to try to do this while I hold the bar, and position these shoulders down, what this does is reduces the movement. And what you get is less diagonal movement from the position of your arms and lockout to the chest. So what I'm trying to do is get my shoulders to the ass. So let me show you again, when I arch through here, and again, it's not just the arch. I'm trying to get my shoulders towards my ass and make my neck long. So when I wrap this, I don't want to be like this. I want to be down here. So I'm going to get into my arch, position my shoulders, wedge them into the bench. I'm going to unwrap and bring those shoulders out like this. And now you can see the length of my arms, the line of my arm is closer to my touch point as I'm pressing. The more protracted and elevated in the scapula we are, the more diagonal distance that bar has to travel when we press. And so for that, you have to cue it mentally more. As where if we get these arms and that shoulder position closer to where we touch on the chest, it's gonna reduce that diagonal difference. And now instead of having to think about pushing up and back, 
you can kind of just let the elbows break into place and then press straight back up. So the first fix is to get your shoulders towards your ass and reduce that diagonal distance that the bar actually has to travel in space between your lockout and your touch point on your chest. All right guys, more on that to come. I'm gonna talk about stability a little bit later, but I'm building up here. I think this is, hey, ex-USAPL Elitist, how much is this on the bar? Was this 317? Three, three For those of you who don't know, this man is, he is, he's come from the dark side to the side of the, the good. I have no love for any federation, man. I just like lifting heavy. It doesn't matter. Uh, I think you actually have like, that's 308 and 309. 20 or 319, something like that. Uh, I'm building up, guys. This is gonna be a triple here. Something I talked about in the past is waking up. Always wake the fuck up for your sets and do it before you get to your top set. So this is definitely not gonna be my working set. But the other thing I've talked about too that really helps is doing build up sets. So today I'm doing triples all the way up until my working set. On squat and bench, it doesn't really tire you out. Deadlifts, it probably will, but it, you actually just get that motor pattern down and, and you really get some like motor learning going acutely in between sets. And I find I just groove so much better when I do that. So I got a triple here and then I'm probably gonna go up. The triple's supposed to be like RP7. All right, this might be my top set. We'll see, I'm looking for a triple at RP7. I'm not gonna lie, I might overshoot this a little bit and go up from here, just cause I want a fucking bench PR, and I'm my worst known coach. Don't do this at home, kids. These uncultured swine didn't know POD. Comment below if you actually know POD. Like it's dumb as fuck that we're doing this to move away. It really fucking is. Oh, it allowed, it's allowed in the rules. That's cool. Hey, I have all my clients arch. I really do. I don't know why I'm ranting right now. I'm just pissed off. I have all my clients arch because everyone else is going to arch. But come on, let's make it a Larson press where you can kind of arch, where your feet are on something. So you're actually using your fucking real body. Real strength. Real strength. Bro, this fucking, this arch shit is dumb as fuck, bro. And all these fucking elitists. <laughs> Yeah, bro. Let's do this. Like, what the fuck is that shit? But, I do that. I do with that. that said, I'm gonna still let my clients hearts because everyone else is gonna do it, but we need to change the rules. We need to change the fucking rules. <laughs> shit should be a large surprise. <laughs> so the next thing to kind of talk about is uh, proper scapula positioning and stability. So when we say stability, I think a lot of people get confused on that terminology. We don't mean like balancing or, or, or you know, like controlling something like on one foot. What we're talking about is controlling the musculature surrounding the uh, joint that is expressing force, okay? So whenever we exert force into the bar, the surrounding musculature is usually the stuff that is gonna stabilize that joint. So for instance, in the bench press, come down here and we stay retracting the press and rotating the shoulder joints so that way when we exert that force into the bar we don't get like protracted and pop out and we create instability going into that bar and then force transfer is lost when we exhibit to the bar so what we need to do is control that scapula the biggest issue people have when they have this problem with pushing down in a way is they end up over flaring the elbows this happens especially in females who uh, tend to be a little bit more hypermobile in the shoulder joints they over flare and protract 
And what this does is it creates a ton of tension in the pec minor, and they actually feel powerful this way. But the problem is then you start pushing away and we lose that scapula position and that shoulder positioning. What we need to do is train the scapula to stay back and down. Today I'm doing some penle rows, and this is actually a really good exercise for controlling this. This exercise has a ton of carryover to all the big three, the squat, the bench, and the deadlift. But I really like it when it's properly done for the bench press, and that's the hard part is not everyone can do this properly. It's also really hard to do if you um, can't use as much weight as a 45 pound plate and you don't have access to bumper plates because the diameter of the plates is lower. And so it's harder. And so you might want to start with a dumbbell seal row, which I prefer as a secondary option. However, if you have access to equipment and you can use either bumper plates or 45 pound plates and more, then you want to use this uh, exercise to help you out. What I like to do though, when I get on here, is I get my back in extension, very similar to how we would bench press. I'm not arching, but I'm just getting everything extended. And I'm gonna grip actually in my bench press grip width, get the knees out, chest high, back arched, and then I'm going to retract and depress the scapula as I initiate the movement like this. So I'm retracting, pressing, and I'm starting with the shoulders. So I'm not staying protracted and pulling like this. I'm actually getting these shoulders set and it's starting the movement and focusing on pulling to the touch point at where I go in the bench press. So if I touch here on the bench, that's where I'm aiming for on this. And I'm trying to position my body into that same position. So scapula contracted, pull, pull it down. You'll notice I control the eccentric. I don't just let this drop really hard like some guys do. Now it is important while you do this that you actually let the scapula protract a little bit on the way down. We want to train the scapula through its full range of motion. That means protraction and retraction. If we stay retracted the whole time, those muscles aren't going to get worked the same way. They're going to get worked only in an isometric.